a confident transmitter, Mr. Bergstrom. I told you I'm not interested. If you don't care to sell it, that makes it easier for us. Uh, take it, Bela. You can't do this. Please, Doctor. Bela. We're not questioning the loyalty of you shipping men. We're merely asking your cooperation. Every oil tanker we lose weakens our Pacific bases. Lack of oil may keep our planes on the ground. Well, if the Navy would only give our tankers protection... You can't expect the Navy to convoy every single tanker, Mr. Bambridge. That's true, that's true. But with the dim out effect, at least we thought our tankers would be harder to find. That's exactly why we've asked you gentlemen down here. We have proof, concrete evidence, that this enemy submarine or submarines didn't have to find your ships. They knew. What? They've been informed by radio the times of sailing and the routes of almost every tanker. It's unbelievable. We've used every precaution, Mr. Fleming. Yes, we know that, but naval intelligence has proof. Lieutenant Winston? This message was short-waved last night in code by an illegal transmitter. Hmm. Tanker Somali sailed tonight at midnight. Route 4. I know I knew anything about this but myself, one or two of my trusted employees. Yet three hours out of port, the Somali was torpedoed, even before this message was decoded. Someone has been systematically relaying this information to the enemy offshore. What do you suggest? Well, you must redouble your efforts at secrecy while we recheck all your employees. In the meanwhile, we'll make every effort to locate this illegal transmitter. You can count on our full cooperation. Thank you very Thank you. much, gentlemen. I'll tell you like that. The spy is right now, right? Uh, what about your listening post, Pomeroy? The trucks are already planted and they'll be in use from now on. Good. We'll be standing by. Oh, thank you very much. You're very welcome. What is it? Just a plane. I hope they broadcast before I get cauliflower ears. That might be an improvement. Hello, Mr. Fleming. Any news from your listening posts? Not a darn thing. If they'd only start sending. Well, I'll stick around for a while. Okay. Maybe something will happen. Oop. 
think I got something. What is it, Al? Your boys must be pretty busy these days. Pomeroy speaking. Yeah. Yes? They're sending. West, northwest. West, northwest. Check. West? Northwest. Pomeroy. East, northeast. East, northeast. Hello, Pomeroy. Directional beam, east to west, exactly. Directional beam, east to west, exactly. Triangulates perfectly. Give me the phone. Hello, this is Fleming of the FBI. Give me my office, quickly. 50th and Essex? 50th and Essex. All right, everybody, just keep your seats. Federal Bureau of Investigation, contamination. West, northwest. West, northwest. Hillcrest and Pinehurst. All right, boys. Yeah, never mind. All right, man. Take a look through here. All right. Zero. We know the transmitter was in every one of those locations while it was being used. Sure. Sure it was. But when we got there, it was gone. They must be using something small, compact, portable. Then it's more powerful than any battery set we've ever heard of. Yeah, they may have a lot of things we've never heard of. Well, you'll just have to keep your boys plugging away, Pomeroy. Oh, by the way, you ever heard of a Johann Bergstrom? Bergstrom? No, I haven't. Ah, never mind. Who's this Bergstrom? He's a radio inventor. Has a laboratory out in the valley. Disappeared last week. Wait a minute. You think he could have some connection with the transmitter? He might have. We know he was working on some kind of a small outfit. Mm -hmm. This device they're using must be highly technical. Suppose something went wrong with it. They'd need help. They'd be in a pretty bad fix. That's exactly what I mean. Let's give him the help. I think I see what you're driving at, but they're probably pretty well set up for mechanical aid. Maybe. But suppose we arrange for some of the best radio brains in this town to be fired from their jobs, and we watch them and see what happens. If nothing comes of it, we can always get them their jobs back. It's a pretty long shot. Yeah. It's worth trying, isn't it? I'm afraid it's been made for you, Mr. Deerhold. We'll have to operate. But she's so young. I know just how you feel, but if you leave it in my hands... times have I told you not to play with my equipment? Uncle. Oh, well, don't cry, darling. The tubes were burned out anyhow. Now you go downstairs and play while I talk to Miss Thurston. Poor child. It's just as if there were nothing wrong with her. There seldom are any obvious symptoms. How soon do you intend to operate? Next week. But I'd like to take her to the hospital now, though, for observation. I'll go down and look after her. Miss Thurston. Yes? Please don't let her know she's going. Do you want me to make arrangements with the hospital? No, I'll make them. Yes? Hello, J.D. Will you have Bixel fix me up with a four-week advance in salary? I need it pretty badly. Come in here, Lou. I've been waiting for you. Morning, J.D. Morning. About that salary advance, I, uh... I'm afraid I can't let you have it, Lou. You can't? I uh, don't know how to tell you this, but we have to let you go. Let 
me go. Does it pertain to my work? Mm, certainly not. It isn't that. Got it from the FBI. Government orders. What's the government got against me? Is it... Oh, because I'm an alien? No, that hasn't anything to do with it. I wish I could tell you why, but I can't. It may be only temporary. Well, if it is because I'm an alien, that's only a technicality. Honestly, J.D., I need this job badly, especially right now. I'm sorry, old man, but we're at war. And lots of things have to be done that you and I don't understand. I think I understand. Radio engineer. What do you want with a repairman's job? Well, I need the work and I can't be choosing. Well, I might be able to find something for you. Swell. How, how soon? Maybe right away. Maybe not at all. Leave your name and address. Uh, just keep that. Goodbye. Oh, he got away. Not with this, he didn't. Well, I'm sorry to cause you so much trouble. There's really nothing valuable in it. No family jewels, Miss uh, A.P. Potter? Pill beam? Uh, Pinkham? No, it couldn't be Pinkham. <laughs> Patterson. Ann Patterson. No reward? No, I'm afraid not. I insist on a reward, Miss Patterson. I once thought I was going to be a second rack man enough. So I end up playing a switchboard in an office. Tell me, what do you do when you're not busy catching purse snatches? Me? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I'm sort of second Marconi. Uh, without a job right now. That's the case in Isle. Oh, no, it's not that bad. You see, I was with Inter-American Broadcasting. They fired me because I was an alien. Oh, you're kidding. I, uh, I came to this country when I was a little kid. Before I was 21, I went abroad to do some postgraduate work. I came back a couple of years ago. Technically, I'm not a citizen. That sounds very involved. <laughs> I hate to break this up, but I've got a date to kiss the most beautiful girl in the world goodnight. How'd you like to come along and watch? Sure. Come on. At least it sounds different. <laughs> That's enough for now. Good night, darling. Will you bring Miss Patterson again? We'll see. Good night. Uncle Wolf, don't forget to kiss her. Good night. Good night, Tina. She's cute, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she is. Her father was one of my professors at Leipzig. Her mother was my sister. What do you mean, was? They're both killed by stormtroopers. I brought her back to this country three years ago. Excuse me a minute, will you please? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Hmm? You speaking to me? Yeah. What are you following me for? You're mistaken. You've been following me all night. I saw you over at the restaurant. I'm sure you're mistaken. No, I'm not. Why don't you FBI guys lay off me? First you got my job, and then... That's your... Yeah, sure, I know I'm mistaken. You go back and tell that boss of yours he's mistaken. And if he hasn't anything better to do than have you follow me around... Look, I've got nothing to hide. May I go now? Yeah. Thank you. Something wrong? No, it's all right. Good night. 
I got tender, I'll make a terrific cup of coffee. Oh, no thanks, Lou. It's too late. I'm a working girl. Uh, when'll I see it? Call me. Tomorrow? Call me. How'd you make out? Good. Good evening, Mr. Deerhold. Oh, Mr. Halding. What's this all about? I regret that we have to wait for you so informally, Mr. Deerhold. This is Dr. Honecker. How do you do? You heard of my health resort, the Old Mill Hot Springs. No, I haven't. No? Mr. Haldine tells me you uh, are interested in obtaining work. Yes, I am, but... Uh... Well, perhaps we should go to your apartment. Surely. After you. Thank you. No doubt you're very confused, Mr. Deerholt. You're not a man to exaggerate, Doctor. <laughs> you're a very amusing chap. I wish he'd sit down. My friend Bela? Manic depressive. Never relaxes. What has he been following me for? You mistook him for a fellow man. Well, to be frank, he has been shadowing you. Not very good at it. Well, we are amateurs at this sort of thing. But I want to come to the point. We have been trying to perfect a therapeutic machine which employs radio principles. I made a thorough study of radiotherapy in Leipzig. Excellent. You hear, Haldine? I must congratulate you on your recommendation, I'm Mr. Deerhold. Thank you, Doctor. My machine has not yet been patented. An attempt has been made to appropriate its principles. Well, that's why all this hocus-pocus, huh? Well, we wanted to investigate you thoroughly before employing you to make parts for the machine. When do you want me to start? At once. Tomorrow we will uh, supply you with materials and blueprints. Uh, Bela, uh, just a little advance. To show our good faith. Satisfactory? Very. To a profitable association. And now we shall have to leave, Holding. You have a very nice place here, Mr. Deerhold. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, yes. There is one other point. You have to handle this work alone. As I said, uh, until we receive our patents, we have to use every precaution. I understand, Doctor. Good night, Mr. Deerhold. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Well, sir, that's one more on his way. Yeah. I used to get a thrill seeing one of my ships leave port, but now I... Well, Larson, let's hope this one gets through. I've got my fingers crossed. All right. Well, can I take you uptown? Uh, no, thanks. I have to run over and pick up a prescription. Oh, is the missus any better? No, sir. Well, that's too bad, Larson. I'll give her my best. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Good evening. Yes. Steamship Barcova sailed 9-15. Route 8. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. That number he called was a pay station, the Edgemore Hotel. Oh, good, Mr. Bambridge. I'm glad you're here. We wanted you present when we questioned this fellow. Well, why don't you want me to radio the tanker? We ought to change his route. Navy instructions. They've got a couple of bombers escorting the Barcoba and hope to trap the sub. Oh, I see. I I'm see. afraid they're not going to have much luck, though. That illegal transmitter's been silent tonight. Uh, by the way, have you ever had any reason to suspect this fellow, Larson? Why, no. He's been with me for over 18 years. Mm -hmm. Well, you never can tell. He's in here. All right, Larson, you've had plenty of time to think it over. You ready to talk now? Come on, man, speak up. You'll be better off. Larson. Dead.
Doctor. Captain Hodgson, Commander Toyo. Welcome, Captain Hodges. Commander. How are you, Doctor? Yes. You understand your new instructions? Don't you think it's dangerous to proceed now that Larson has been arrested? You don't worry about that, Doctor. Larson killed himself without talking. Now that they know about Larson, they believe our information is stopped completely. But if any tankers are leaving, you will contact the submarine? In the usual manner. But, Doctor, the radio is not... Bela! The radio is not what? The equipment is temporarily out of order. Why did you not tell us? Do not excite yourself, Commander. At this moment, the competent engineer is completing the necessary replacement. We have been assigned one duty, Doctor. To see that no oil reaches our right basis. We cannot fail in this. I assure you, you will handle our part. Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. The submarine that is accomplishing this work, gentlemen, is Japanese. Oh, here it is. A bunch of junk, it's a living. What's this, something to do with your new job? Uh, as bad as Tina. <laughs> That's not bad. Come on out here and I'll show you something really pretty. I hired a little man to go around and put a special twinkle in those lights tonight. Just for you. Oh, it's beautiful. Why, Mr. Deerhold. Blame it on Tina. Why, Tina? Tina's a pretty stubborn little girl, and she's got her mind made up to have you for a new mama. Don't you think Tina's a bit of a fast worker? That's what I told her. You tell Tina to give me a chance to think, will you? You better go in, you're getting cold. Oh, no, I, I like it here. Just get my coat for me. J.B. Johann Bergstrom. Well, these initials are identical with those we picked up in Bergstrom's shack. He doesn't know you took this. No, of course not. He might have had some legitimate business with Bergstrom. Possibly. Better pick him up, Grayson. Yes, sir. Relax, kid. J.B. could stand for Jack Benny. Yes, Dr. Yes. Tina's condition has suddenly changed. I'll have to operate tonight. I'll be right over. Yes, what is it? I'm in a hurry. So are we, Mr. Deerhold. FBI. Haven't I seen your faces someplace before? We get around. Chief wants to have a little talk with you. I'm sorry, but my business is urgent. So is this, very urgent. All right. Yeah. The fourth block, huh? Yes, all right. Ann. Yeah. Will you take care of this right away, please? Sure. Yes? Mr. Grayson is here with Mr. Deerhall. All right, send him in. You better take a walk. Yes, uh, I'll be down in the drugstore. All right, hurry up. This is Mr. Deerhall, Mr. Fleming. How do you do, Mr. Deerhall? Look here, Mr. Fleming. First the FBI got my job, and then you picked me up. Just what do you want with me? We think you can give us some information. Won't you sit down, please? Understand you have a new job. Yes, I'm doing some work on my own. Mm-hmm. What kind of work, Mr. Deerhold? I, uh... What kind of work? Uh, therapy machine, diathermy. Therapy, huh? Tell me, when did you see Bergstrom last? Bergstrom? Johann Bergstrom. Well, I don't know him personally. I know of his work very fine in his field. So I understand. Right now, you're working on a machine to make people healthy. Is that it? That's right. 
Another one of these. Did he have anything to say? Nothing so far. The chief can't keep him up there much longer. He wants me to case the apartment. Here to keep him busy. Right there. Kind of like the guy, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I hope for your sake I don't find anything. But I'm going to look just the same. You're a good egg, Kitty. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I'll check on it right away. All right. Excuse me, Mr. Dole. Mr. Fleming, are you holding me on any charge? Nope. Well, I've got to be at the Southern Hospital. I don't know what you want with me, but you know where you can find me. All right, dear hold, you can go. Thank you. doing here? I thought you were a working girl. I have the afternoon off. Can I drop you somewhere? Yeah, you can drop me to the hospital. Well, get in. Ann, mm -hmm. you believe in fate? In what way? You know, like two people meeting out of nowhere, like you and me, and one little coincidence, like that tramp grabbing your bag. Mm -hmm. Those things happen? No, it must have been fate. Into you. Now you can go back and tell your boss to give you a bonus for the way you handled me. And if ever I want any purse to snatch, you can tell Grace and I'll get in touch with him. I can't wait. Open the door, Haldine. He might not come back for hours yet. Craftsman. Yes, I have a feeling that ideologically he is one of us. He would make a valuable party man. Hurry with that. We must get back and prepare that code record. Just a minute, Doctor. There. Fantastic. Yes. Thanks to Mr. Bergson. All right, Doctor. Reach. You too. Over by the door, all of you. Well, so this was Bergstrom's gadget. What kind of prescriptions do you write, Doctor? Thank you! Quickly! What happened? Your Nazi doctor friend. <coughs> Shortwave transmitter. Nazi?
Hello. Hello, Dr. Barclay. Lou Deerholt. I'm afraid I can't be at the hospital tonight. No matter what happens, go through with the operation. Open up in there. I can't explain now. I'll call you tomorrow. Goodbye, Doctor. this stuff up. Drop it on there, boss. Okay. Address book, laundry list, letters. Hey, wait a minute, what's this? Oh, the woman in the case. Ann Patterson, Academy 4328. Hunnaker. That's one of those mud bath places, just out of town. A great place to sweat it out. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. You better check this the first chance you get. Bring that stuff downstairs. Yes, sir. If he's as crazy about that kid as you say, we better stake out the hospital. Crazy? Drive. All right. 
Right, get out, pal. Maybe the doctor will give you a medal for this. The gate man informed me you out on the way. Yeah, I happen to be in the neighborhood. Do come Go in. Come on, get in there. After you, doctor. Sit down. Mm -hmm. I'm a manic depressant. Like laughing boy. <laughs> you are in a very amusing chap. Have a cigarette. Never mind about that. What are you going to do about me? You seem to have a grievance, dear Hall. After knocking that FBI guy off in my apartment, what do you want me to do? Kiss you? I believe the usual procedure is to go to the police. And stick my neck out? For you? Oh, no, I'm looking after myself. You don't think you fooled me with that electric therapy machine, do you? I was wise to you guys right from the beginning. So? So I'm cutting myself in. Sure, you put me on the spot when you knocked that guy off. But leaving that bag behind was no stroke of genius. Don't worry. I brought these along, too. Just what do you want? I told you I wanted to cut in. There's real dough in this, not the kind of chicken feed you've been paying me, but real dough. Suppose we don't let you uh, in. Now, wait a minute, Doctor. You need me just as much as I need you. I'm pretty handy with those little gadgets. You're not kidding me. When you came to me in the first place, you knew I was an alien. And after the pushing around I got from those federal agents, where do you think I stand? For every true Aryan with an ounce of intelligence should stand, squarely behind the fuel. I admire your spirit, Diehold. You'll have a fine place in the new order in this country. You bet your sweet life I will. Now, uh, may I have that? Yeah, I took it away from him. You never can tell a guy as unhappy as that might bump himself off. Don't trust him, Doctor. Bela, don't be vindictive. We need clever men. We need you, too. Now, oh, Doctor, I'll have one of your cigarettes. Please. He said that no matter what happened, I was to go ahead with the operation. Well, if it calls again, keep him on the phone. We'll check the call. Right. And I better check this. Good night, Doctor. Good night. You better get some rest, Dan. You've had a hectic day. Good night. Good night. You are quite certain the police did not follow you. What kind of a sap do you think you're dealing with? You will be safe here. The police do not suspect this person. Yeah, it's as cozy as the record is ready. Good. Come along, Dehart. I want to try it on an expert. Hurry up, Haldane. They're quite anxious to have Mr. Dehart's opinion. This is all right. Your own laboratory, huh? The method of disguising our radio signal. See what you think. If that's cold, you can't prove it by me. <clears throat> How are you progressing with your guest? You may leave, Haldane. You're done well. Thank you, Doctor. We shall see, Commander. I want you to meet our guest, Mr. Bambridge. Bambridge? Very important man. Head of the Bambrick shipping lines. Ah. <clears throat> what has it to say, Bela? We do not choose to do this, Mr. Bambridge. Why not be reasonable? A few words and we'll let you go. I don't bargain with rats. Continue. You're wasting time, Hunter. I just will get us the information we need. You're right, Commander. Bela! Ah. Get rid of him. Why not our new recruit? It'll be good training. <laughs> Splendid, Bela. Splendid. Dear Holt, your first assignment. <laughs> All right, boys, you better come up here. Stay where you are, Bambridge. 
Put him up. So, Bela was right after all. Hmm? Stay where you are. <laughs> you didn't think I was going to give you a loaded gun, did you? Really? <laughs> When they find him, he'll be miles from here. That is making up for lost time, huh? Sailing 915, route 4. Good. One moment. He wants to know if he should join us now. Give me the phone. Mm. You know, Toyo is speaking. Yes, the doctor told me. Excellent, Hodges, excellent. We'll set the flares above Shore Hills Point. Continue as you are until the ships have left, then phone us at the appointed place. We must make positive there are no last minute changes in the sailing orders. Understood? That is correct. Goodbye. There, see, Commander. Everything on schedule. Did you have a transmitter put in the car? Oh, yes, Doctor. Put the flares in, too. Yes, Doctor. Craft sail tonight. Sight the yellow flare. Route. Well, the tanker should be opposite Shore Hills Point at, say, 9.45. I'll add the sailing time to the report and bring the record myself. This time, there will be no further mistakes. I'll see you in a moment. Thank you. 
No, that way. Hold the gate and tell him to take care of the fence. They're not taking any guests. The hot springs is closed for the season. I don't want to stay here. I'd just like to talk to Dr. Honecker. The doctor's away. There's nobody here but me. Do you know Mr. Deerhold? Was he one of the doctor's patients? I'm only the gateman. I don't know any of the patients. When will the doctor return? I don't know. So glad to see anybody in my life. Neither was I. Get in here. Thanks. Hurry with that record, Honecker. Your stupidity may cause complete failure. If you should get to the police. Please, Commander. In the first place, you can't know what our plans are. In the second place, the police are the last people he wants to see. Logic. Logic. If we are defeated, it will be by your German logic. Hurry. Let's hear that again. The head of the Bambridge Steamship Company was just killed back there. If I don't get to his office right away, three tankers will be sunk. Where do you think that story will get you? You're going down to see my boss. I'll go any place you like. But take me to somebody who can stop those tankers from sailing. Just keep talking. You have a talent for it. What is it, please? I got some vital information regarding some of your tankers that are leaving tonight. Where did you learn that we were... Never mind. There's some people here who say they have some urgent information regarding tonight's sailings. Send them in. Yes, sir. Will you go in, please? Thank right you. Right in there. <coughs> oh, how do you do? Bambridge. Pretty healthy corpse, huh? I don't believe I've had the privilege. Uh, I thought that this is impossible. I'm Ann Patterson. This is Lou Deerhold. Who is this? Lou Deerhold. Deerhold? The man whom the police are... Yes, I just picked him up. He insisted on coming here. Said he had the lowdown on a spy plot. Something about a submarine that's scheduled to attack your tankers tonight. Well, speak up, man. What do you know? Don't be alarmed, Mr. Bambridge. He also told me that he saw you killed by a Jap at the Old Mill Hot Springs. You don't look very dead to me. Well, you really had me worried. This uh, is pretty fantastic, isn't it? Are you satisfied to come along now? Just a minute. 
What she says happened. What happened to you, I don't know. The rest of it, I... Well, as I happen to be involved in this case, Miss Patterson, uh, I believe I should accompany you to your office. Something screwy around here. If you have any more to say, say it to my boss. He enjoys a good story. We can use my car. Route two, Mr. Van Flitch. Old Mill Hot Springs. Now, don't do anything foolish. Hmm. Beautiful weapons, these automatics. So they really killed Bambridge? Oh, yes. I know what you're thinking of, Mr. Deerhold. Please don't. Killing isn't my profession. I'm convinced. Your mustache is coming loose. Thank you. It is a nuisance, isn't it? Your makeup's very good. Hmm. Nothing remarkable. My features are not unlike Mr. Bambridge's. Few gray hairs, mustache, glasses, a little makeup. Very easy. You should have seen me in a Deutsches there in Berlin. Just a hand. The very best. Are you sure you understand every detail? Quite sure. Good. I will return immediately to the Bambridge office. Very well, Captain Hodges. You better lock them up where they'll be safe and then proceed at once to your post. With the dim out in effect, our submarine needs the help of your flares. We are ready. You see, D. Hort? You cost me a great deal of embarrassment. Give them to me, Dr. Bela. I believe you acted the way you did because you were shocked by what we did to Bainbridge. My friend, we have to do those things. There's nothing we can do about the girl, but I'm giving you a last opportunity to become part of the new order. That's quite a choice, Doctor. The choice of dying like a man or living like a rat. Sure, I could lie, but after watching you boys work, I'm afraid it would turn my stomach. <sighs> You're not even an American. You have been complaining yourself that you were unjustly persecuted by the FBI. Sure, I squawked. I had a right to squawk. Because this is America. I see. It's no use. I'm wasting my time on you. Take them down, Bela. I'll see you at the car. see if you're so amusing. Goodbye, Mr. Deerholt. They've gone. Take it easy. Might be in surgery. Oh, doctor. You haven't heard from me, man. No, I'll have to go ahead. Regarding the setting, routes to the ships. Oh. They get off the Shore Hills Point, they stop to knock off the tankers. Nice, tight little scheme. They sailed at 9.15. Yes, 
I'm leaving immediately. Transformer to work. Everything's worth trying. Here, Harding. Well, Doctor? You left on schedule. Good. Signal the submarine. Those other two wires. Here. Keep your light on. It won't be very strong. It can't reach very far, maybe a half a mile. Let's hope it works. Let's pray that somebody's listening to and read the stuff. Time, Johnny. You were up late last night. Oh, gee, Pop, I've been trying to get Australia. Now, you heard what your father said, Johnny. You turn that thing off and go to bed. Oh, gee. Wait a minute, Mom. That sounds like coal. Who would your idea? I don't know what I'm going to do, but that's fun of you. <laughs> A chip off the old block. Johnny, go to bed. Get me the FBI. Uh, yes. If you've pulled a boner. Well, Johnny, hey, wait a minute. Hello? Yeah? Yeah, well, thank you. No, the kid's probably right. All right, boys, get a squad car in front right away. Yes, sir. Bart, give me the bomber command. Make it snappy. Attention. Submarine alert. Third bomber squadron. Japanese sub reported off Shore Hills Point. Take off at once. You know what to do, boys.
word, Lieutenant. Nothing but those three tankers up ahead. Keep your eyes peeled. All right, open up in there. Open up. What's going on? You've got a couple of prisoners here. There's nobody here but me. Yeah, but we'll find out. Joe, take care of him. Ship off left wing, sir. Could be a submarine. Make up your mind. Wipe your glasses. It's a pig boat, all right. This is our inning. Give me first track. Submarine sighted. Sunk. That's all. All right, that's all. Come on, get out of there. All right, fellas, take them on in. Come on. Bring these cars back. What about here? Steam room. Steam room. Let's try this. Oh, yeah. As your commanding officer, it is a privilege to present you, Private Deerhold, with this certificate of citizenship by special act of the Congress of the United States. I'm very happy to receive this, sir. Honestly, folks, it isn't this piece of paper that makes an American. It's what you have in your heart for your country. We know our way of life is best. We're fighting to keep it that way. Thank you, Private Deerhold. 